Before we dive into today's episode, I want to take a moment to address something important. Today, we will be discussing some sensitive topics and information that may be distressing or triggering for some listeners. Your mental health and well being is a top priority. If at any point you feel uncomfortable or overwhelmed, I encourage you to take a break, step away, or seek support from a trusted friend family member, or a mental health professional. Remember, it's okay to put yourself first. Taking care of your mental health is crucial, and there are resources available if you need them. I've included some helpful links and contact information in the show notes for anyone who may need support. Thank you for listening, and please take care of yourselves. Welcome back to the Nana Boss Audits and Investigations and to another episode of the Scientology Chronicles. So let's jump right in, shall we? This document is dated June 12th, 1963. And this is a Uh, interview with a Dorothy and Robert Waller and J.O. Gessling and W.N. Swain, Division of Regulatory Management. Mrs. Waller had spoken to Mr. Van Smart over the telephone a couple of times concerning Scientology and the e-meter, and an appointment was made for her to come in and discuss the matter at this time. At, as best it could be determined, the ostensible reason for the visit was the fact that Mr. Robert Waller, her husband, had received Scientology treatment for a sore back and headache condition for several years and had had very little, if any, results. And in fact, for the past five years, had been unemployed, unable to obtain work, and had spent some time in a state hospital for a mental condition. At some time during his experience of unemployment, he was also an alcoholic. Mrs. Waller explained that due to his status and for other vague reasons, their two children, age five and a half and three years old, had been removed from their custody and placed in a foster home that the psychological services and other volunteer organizations purporting to help people in trouble in the Elmira Corning, New York area were not doing an adequate job, both with respect to the condition of the Wallers and with respect to some 200 other people who worked at the same glass works with Mrs. Waller and Mr. Waller was quite vehement that something should be done about the false and misleading nature of these agencies in purporting to hold out help to the unfortunate and failing to provide help. She was quite vehement to the effect that the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act prohibited misleading and that these agencies were misleading the public in purporting to help individuals. Mr. Waller seemed to understand that the law's application was limited to only certain articles and circumstances. Mrs. Waller recited as her history that around 1950, she had read the book Dianetics, the Science of Mental Health. Following this were several training visits and co-auditing experiences among the instructors being Dr. Richard Steves. Mrs. Waller indicated that she had received some benefits from the practices as, for example, When on a co-auditing tour of Grand Central Station in New York, she exteriorized and her Thetan found itself near the ceiling of the Grand Concourse, from which vantage point she could look down and see the entire activities of Grand Central Station and hear the sounds, the smells, etc. 
Another such experience involved bringing a flowering tree into bloom when it apparently had no intention of doing so otherwise. In this first among other discussions, she later described how she learned why she always had to have dirty clothes. It developed that she never finished with all of the laundry tasks of the household, but that she had, through Scientology procedures, discovered that in one of her past lives, she had been a professional laundress and found it necessary to always have dirty clothes ahead of her to be washed. This experience improved the whole laundry situation. Touching more intimately on the trouble between herself and her husband, she explained that in another past life, she had been engaged in the sale of sexual favors as a mean of support and livelihood for her family for an entire lifetime, with resulted effects on her interpersonal relationships between herself and her husband, which apparently involved some rejection of his advances. To continue with her history, in 1955 or thereabouts, she came to the Academy of Scientology at Washington and took advanced courses in auditing the HCS and the HCA courses as nearly as could be determined. These encompassed at least 300 hours of co-audit experience. While at the Academy of Scientology, she met and fell in love with Mr. Waller, whom she subsequently married and had managed to make an excellent improvement in her personality by the application of Scientology techniques to this to this confirmation class of the more overactive youngsters and had managed to make an excellent improvement in their personality by the application of Scientology techniques to this confirmation class. Since her marriage to Mr. Waller, she has not actively pursued the further training in Scientology, but apparently has offered her services to acquaintances at times, such as auditing, and according to her, she has not practiced professionally as an auditor. On inquiry, it was revealed that at the time she took her training there was very little use of the e-meter, and she demonstrated by holding Mr. Swain's hand the manner in which auditors, by feeling the hand and observing facial expressions of the individual, could determine their response to the auditing questions. Mr. Waller's story was told in somewhat less detail to the effect that about the time of his graduation from high school, around 1950, he joined up with a group of practitioners of Dianetics in Peoria, Illinois, where he was raised. After some preliminary training, he also came to the Academy of Scientology at Washington, D.C. His declared reason for coming was to rid himself of a disturbing and disabling set of pains in his back and shoulder and neck and severe headache attacks. He took the HCA and the HAA and the ACC in the period of 1955 and 1956. The earlier aspects of his attendance were straightforward processing in an effort to rid him of his troubles, and only later did he receive training in becoming an auditor, prim primarily for the reason that the other processing had achieved nothing, and it was felt that he and it was felt that the advanced procedures might achieve some results. Both Mr. and Mrs. Waller indicated that he had received no benefits from the organization's practices. Mr. Waller characterized the whole matter on which he had expended several thousand dollars as being nothing more than a good parlor game. 
1955, Mr. Waller moved to Elmira, New York, with the understanding that he was to obtain some appointment in the in. In 1955, Mr. Waller moved to Elmira, New York, with the understanding that he was to obtain some appointment in the post office there. But he was never, but he never obtained this appointment and has not engaged in gainful employment of any other sort during this period of time. At best, as he could gather, there was a certain amount of alcoholism or indulgence in alcohol involved in his condition and a mental instability which resulted in his attendance at the state hospital. Also, personal difficulties with Mrs. Waller, which resulted in consultations with the social services in the vicinity and the eventual placement of their children in a foster home. Mr. Waller inquired if there were any possibility of the government ordering restitution of the of money expended with the Scientology outfit for no good purpose. The legal situation with respect to restitution under the food and drug actions was explained to him. He seemed to understand that civil action on on this part, independent of the government, would require his production or of rather extensive evidence if he hoped to benefit from such civil action. Mr. Waller seemed to get more vehement and somewhat incoherent as the, com as the conference wore on and with considerable discouragement by Mr. Waller and with less response to her conversation by Mr. Swain, the conference was eventually terminated. Mr. Waller suggested that possibly their troubles with the social services of the Elmira vicinity might better be presented to their congressman and prevailed on Mrs. Waller to take, to take with them the two reels of tape and other recorded material which she had prepared for presentation to someone who could do something about the social services. With some background investigation, the presentation of these two individuals as witnesses in the eventual trial of the action would be very interesting as examples of the sort of personality that is produced by the personal efficiency course and other courses of the Scientology organization. Mrs. Waller is a compulsive talker and impresses one as being on the verge of living in a sort of fantasy, while Mr. Waller seems like a more stable and restrained sort of person who apparently has had considerable difficulties by reason of his involvement in the organization. On the other hand, it does not seem likely that the government would want to be bound by statements made by Mrs. Waller. W.N. Swain. Uh, these stories, they just get so sad. And it just makes you wonder sometimes what people's lives could have been and, and how different it could have been for Mr. and Mrs. Waller and their children if they had never come across Scientology. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. No more kids in Scientology. Kids can't consent. And remember to spread love and kindness wherever you go. And I'll catch you on the next one.